Well, it doesn't get any more sexy and sultry on the dance floor than with a tango. Hey everyone, welcome to Keyboard Skills Pro, my YouTube channel. My name's Tom Horden, I'm a UK-based professional musician and I'm fairly well known in the world for my work with organs, electronic, church and of course theatre pipe organs, the mighty Wurlitzers and so on. And in this video, which is part two of a How to Play series of the pieces in my theatre organ book, Theatre Organ Originals, Volume 1. This was written a couple of years ago, back um, now during the lockdown um, when we had the pandemic, and uh, yeah, it was a joy to do five original pieces written with the mighty theatre organs in mind. You can get this by visiting the website, tomhorton.co.uk. It's a beautiful ring-bound book with over 40 pages of music and also um, registration notes that come with it um, to help you get some nice sounds on your instrument or if you're going to go and play a real theatre pipe organ. So, in the first part, we looked at sections... Um, a, which is the intro, and also B. We're now going to go over the page to sections uh, C and D. Notice how the book is also ring-bound okay, for um, ease of turning pages, and also it lays, it lays flat, of course, which is very nice. So, so just section C in this video, folks, which is um, bars 13 through 18, 19, and 20. Then we've got a coda that sends us back to the beginning. So, where are we coming from? Well, we've now, we've now got a, a change of... Uh, key signature up here. We're going to go to G major, so we're losing our C sharp, um, and we've got a slightly different rhythm now on the pedals and the accompaniment. So that's a rum, bum, 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 rum. It's slightly more rumba-esque, but it, it, it's, um, I suppose, a variation on, on a tango. Um, sort of style, um, but again, we're going to make sure that we take special notice of the articulation, which are the staccatos and the little lines, the tenuto nines. The tenuto nines means hold me down, give me my full length. I'm, if I'm a beat, give me a full beat. Um, so we've just we've just joined in here um, at eleven. It says add xylophone. We're going back to the solo keyboard, but we're going to play it on on this keyboard for the purposes of the camera. So we'll look at that in a second. So here's the um, here's the walking uh, the bass going down. B A G. Okay, so now we've got a G chord. Look, and we're going to go one, two. Don't forget staccato. It's very short. Okay, really short there. One, two, and E minor. So the fourth beat there has got the tenuto on. So you see how I sort of held it. It's not making it any longer, but. It, 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 it's it's not increasing the length of the crotchet, but we're hearing the crotchet in its absolute entirety. We're hearing the whole of beat four, whereas the previous beat three, um, of course, is a um, is a, um, a a staccato crotchet. So that sounds more like a quaver, or maybe a little less, an eighth note. Okay, so here we go. Then so one, da, E minor seven, whole, and then when you do that nice short effect, look. Watch the pedals there. There's an E look stepping to um, a D. So watch out for that as you go down. Same on the pedal look. Hold the E down. Dum, dum, bum. E, A, and E, D. It's a nice change, isn't it? Don't you often get A minor sevens with E's on pedals. Okay. Now we then got G major nine. That's a G chord with an A being added. And then G6, as the pedal walks up to the next page, where we've got B suspended fourth. That's F sharp, B, and E. And those two guys are going to stay down. The E is the one that drops to the D sharp. One, two, three, four. Now, notice there that the tambourine and the castanet, and that's good. We want that effect there, because it's a kind of a build into the next little section. 
So here we go then with the, the chords and the accompaniment. Bar 13. One, two, and three, four. And then we're into the next bit, okay? So work on that, and just like we said in the first video, the important thing um, is to um, make sure that you really get your left hand and your pedals really well learnt. So spend some time on the pedal and the accompaniment line. Okay, and so on. Now, the melody line now employs thirds. So we've got some nice thirds coming in, pairs of notes um, working together. And there's a lot of triplets in this section, okay? A lot of triplet rhythms. So don't forget, we have to remember not to play C sharp now because we've gone into a, we've modulated to G major. One, two, three. And we're now gonna go into C, look. So it's one, da, da, one, two, three. Now, triplets are funny things because they're not rhythmically accurate triplets. They're, they're a, one of the few times in music, and we, we've done some theory on triplets, where they're kind of a bit of a fudge, where somebody goes, well, I want it to sound like this, and they couldn't quite work out a proper way of writing it down. So what somebody said was, well, okay, well, what you've got there is kind of three notes where we should have only two, so we'll call it a triplet, put a line over it, um, and then it's up to you to kind of feel how you want to fit those in. But as long as they fit over the two beats, it's fine. So when we're doing this little rundown, look, use our fingers like that. Okay, so five and three, two and four, one and three. So it's one coming in from the top of the page here. Look, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now triplets, I have a word I like to use, which is pineapple, pineapple. That represents three syllables, which represents the three parts of the triplet. So what we've got to do is we've got to go one, two, pine. Now I'm holding that because it is, of course, tied over, isn't it? So we don't play the first chord in the triplet. We go one, two, three. And, uh, but we're going to use the pineapple to help us get that rhythm nicely swinging. One, two, pine, apple. One, two, three, da, da, da. Okay, next pair, look, then we've got a proper triplet group here. One, two, pineapple. And you see it's slightly swingy, it's not quite in time, it sounds a little, little tipsy. One, two, pineapple, one, two, pineapple. So that's the signature there, and again, that's, that would be on your third keyboard, your solo or your split point. Um, just for today, I'm playing it on the upper keyboard for the purposes of the camera. So here we go, all together then. One, two, three. Let's go from the, from the top. One, two, three, off. There we go. And it finishes up here with a perfect fifth. Okay, so let's see how that fits together. Now, of course, this is why I said earlier, with the accompaniment and the pedals, you've got to make sure that this accompaniment is absolutely known so you know exactly what to do when you put this with it. Because if you don't, it's very hard to fit triplets over the top. But to a certain extent, it all kind of just fits together quite nicely. And you're probably noticing it's quite a good song to learn in, in blocks. So learn them in you know four bars at a time and then stick them all together. But of course, don't forget, you haven't got to play everything on the score as, as it is. You know, if you don't want to play it on the solo, just play everything on the on the great that you know whatever you feel comfortable doing you can make your own version of it um, as with all pieces of music it's only written down by the composer then it's up to you if you want to do little variations and different registrations and changes you know those of you with electronic organs tangos strings guitars pianos clarinets you know you have my blessing you know have a have a good little play of, uh, of things through so there we go so that's that little bit there so let's have a work up that again so, so, so I'm, I'm actually fitting that. Just comes a little bit after the chord, maybe. 
crispy, so it's nice to get that held cord in. And then that D sharp on the pedals down there, look. So one, as we're going, one, two, three, four, um, do, um, so toe and heel that, look, do, um. Um, now, now going then a little further into the next bit, we've got an instruction to turn the trims off, which does, <laughs> pressing the wrong button doesn't help, Tom. There you go. So now we've got a much cleaner sound, and then we're going into this um, this little bit here, look, where we've got a run. And of course, without the trims on, it's nice and very quick and lively. So the melodic line there goes one, two, three, four, da 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 da. So groups of four, think of them as caterpillars. So one, two, three, caterpillar done. One, two, three, caterpillar done. Okay, or one, two, three, four, E and a one. So there's your melody, look. Okay, let's put that back on the camera. One, two, three, four. Look at the rhythm there, look. One and two and follow the leader. Two, three, four. So notice we're now, it's starting to sound minor again. Okay, and that's because we're starting to modulate back because we've now got an instruction at the end here that says DCL Coda. That means we go all the way back to the beginning. DC, Dar Capo, the beginning. So all the way back to the beginning. Um, and so that's going to be nice and lively. Notice the left hand look. So nice and staccato. One, two, three, B. B at the end there. Watch out for that. One, two, three, B, A. And then the pedals walk down. Do, 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 do. Down to E. So it's A minors. Add the G for A minor 7, and then F sharp, dominant 7th again, okay. Okay, got that in there, dum, dum, B7, and E minor. Notice how we're staying there on the B pedals. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, because that really pushes us nicely towards our... E minor sound. Again, the melody through there is very legato, got the slur lines. One, two, three, and. Because we've got the very staccato. And then once you finish that, you go all the way back to the beginning. through A and B um, and of course at the end of bar 11 um, it says two coda but when you turn the page over you will come to it and the ending is the same so if you need to do a page turn there if you can memorize that dum -da -da -dum -bum -bum, or dum -da -dum -dum -dum, if you want to change the rhythm there that's fine there we go and then we go into our coda, which is the last two pages, that's section D. Now, if you'd like to spend some time with me learning section D, that is available as a bonus video, only available on patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro. So if you want to see a bonus video, sign up on there for silver level or above. And not only do you get access to a big back catalog of, of extra videos, there's also a lot of uh, extra content on there, bonus PDFs. Um, and other posts that you don't get anywhere else. So parts one and two have been made available for free on YouTube, hope you've enjoyed those. Part three, you need to subscribe to Patreon and that helps support the channel 
and gives uh, gives us a, a, a sort of a monthly um, subscription which helps the channel keep going and it grows and helps me work on you know investing in better cameras and software and all things like that so hopefully you'll consider that and uh, do check it out but if you haven't got the book folks theater organ originals is the one that you need there it is and it's available on my website tomhorton.co.uk where you'll also find lots of other cool books on piano and keyboard and everything else so thanks for watching everybody and enjoy learning the tibia tango and i'll see those of you on Patreon in part three. Thanks so much, hit subscribe, and we'll see you for another organ lesson very, very soon. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. <laughs>